This is the Out 100 celebration featuring our 2022 Out 100 cover stars. Haley Kiyoko, Gerard Carmichael, Rafael Silva and Rona Rubenstein, the old gays, and many more. More than 100 people are represented in the pages of this year's Out 100 magazine, and tonight we pay tribute to them all. And we'll take you inside the Out 100 celebration here in New York City. We're on the red carpet as the honorees of the year arrive. Hi and welcome, I'm James Vaughn. And I'm Sonia Baghdadi. We're here in New York City for the Out 100 party. We're gonna take you to the red carpet a little later on, but this is the most diverse compilation of Out 100 in our 30 year history. Yeah, the Out 100 list is the largest annual portfolio, recognizing members of the LGBTQ plus community for their groundbreaking, ripple inducing and culture shifting impact around the world. And this year we have four covers, all that have an elemental theme. That's right, Fire with Haley Kiyoko, Earth with Raphael Silva and Ronan Rubin. Einstein, air with the old gaze, water with Gerard Carmichael. The four elements also representing resilience for the LGBTQ plus community. Let's begin with Ronan Rubenstein and Rafael Silva, who are simply known to their fans as Tarlos. We caught up with the duo on the set of their Out 100 cover shoot where things got so hot, we had to call 911 because their chemistry on screen, it spills into their relationship off screen. For three seasons, Ronan and Raphael have been playing TK the firefighter and Carlos the cop, who fall in love on Ryan Murphy's hit Fox drama, 911 Lone Star. To be a part of a project that not only you enjoy doing, but you're also super proud of what we're showing on screen and the stories that we're telling, um, especially Tarlos, you know, I think it's, so important. In real life, Ronan, who was born in Israel, identifies as bi, and Rafael, who immigrated from Brazil, identifies as gay. Both so proud to now bring all their diversity to primetime network television. This union is going into homes in America where this conversation, queer people, are not talked about, mm -hmm. are not seen, are not asked for. So the fact that we just get to walk into your living room without your asking, that brings me joy. Perhaps there's a young kid, a closeted little young kid, who's watching with his parents, and perhaps the parents are making some homophobic comment about to, you know, these characters kissing. But th that kid, even though he's in his home with that sort of comment, with that sort of reality, he can find refuge, not in Ronan and Raphael, but in TK and Carlos. With TK and Carlos now engaged and season four set to premiere in January, what better way to celebrate than by appearing on the cover of this year's Out 100 issue? I mean, I think for both of us, it's a huge honor. She might, the biggest, yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, I was shocked, honestly, when yeah, we found that. I was not expecting, to be quite honest. Out has such a history paving the way for queer people to be here right now. I think it's uh, it's such a privilege. I'm very much aware of the people that, you know, graced the cover in the past. Um, people yeah. like Elliot Page, Sam Smith, you know. Um, so it's a, it's so a true, people. it's a true honor, yeah. yeah. Silva and Rubenstein say they're more committed than ever to nailing their parts as authentically as possible. And they can't wait for fans to see what season four of Tarlos has in store. Well, James, if I said that our next Out 100 honoree made history on the game show Jeopardy, what would your response be? Oh, I know this. I would say, who is Amy Schneider? With each win, Amy has gained more confidence and influence, all while becoming a beacon for transgender rights. And we talked with her about her historic run on the show and her plans for the future. It's definitely been a year unlike any I ever expected to have, for sure. Oh, what a 2022 it's been for Amy. She dominated as Jeopardy! champion for an incredible 40 days, making her an overnight game show superstar and one of the most famous transgender women in the country. From the beginning of when my, my episodes of Jeopardy! first started airing and just being so happy to have, you know, uh, headlines about a trans person that wasn't, you know, dire and like was, was just positive was, you know, I, I knew that that was a good feeling. Also making Amy feel good, the fact that her 40 day winning streak was the second longest in Jeopardy history that she became the first woman to earn over $1 million on the show and that her appearances on TV made a powerful impression. I think that it's also just been, uh, 
surprising to me how much of an impact it's made on you know people outside of their community on on you know the the moms and grandpas and whoever else that are out there watching jeopardy for the most part and how much of a difference it made for them to see a trans person that was not you know political or you know weird or anything like that it was just living my life and, and playing jeopardy this year amy also got married to her partner genevieve and is now working on a new book fulfilling her lifelong dream of becoming a writer amy hoping to use her new platform to encourage the trans community. I certainly, you know, know what it was like growing up in the 80s and, and what the image of trans people was. And, you know, until maybe 10 years ago, that really hadn't much changed in the, in the culture at large. Uh, so, you know, I think we, you know, shouldn't, it's so tempting to always like look at the fear and look at, you know, what, what the worst case scenarios and, and all that sort of thing. But I think we should also just be really like, proud and, and happy about all that we've done. And that, that should give us confidence that we're gonna meet these challenges as well. Amy told us she thinks writing a book will be quite challenging, but in five years, the Jeopardy star said she'd like to be considered an established author. Well, we're here in Manhattan for the Out 100 celebration at Club Nebula. Many of the honorees are actually here to celebrate their accomplishments with us here tonight. Let's check in now with the Advocate Channel, Stephen Walker, because he's on the red carpet downstairs. Hey, Stephen, what's going on down there? Guys, it's crazy here on the red carpet. I'm having so much fun meeting all these honorees. And, ah, congratulations! And how did it feel when you found out? And where were you? I'm loving the stories when people are like, "I was at Target." Oh, there you go. I was at Target, where all the queer people are when good of things course. happen. Um, and I had just found out a couple of weeks earlier about make, being Georgia Author of the Year. And I was like, a single, not a single more good thing can happen to me. And then made out 100. And then Lizzo let me borrow her dress for the night. And I think I could die at the end of the year and be really happy. Repeat that last bit. Lizzo let me borrow her dress for the evening. That's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Amazing. You look amazing. Period. <laughs> Hello. So how does it feel to be in the out 100? Oh, oh, it's, it's, it's just been so wonderful. I mean, it's so totally unexpected. And in a way, a kind of vindication. I don't know, you know, after, I mean, our combined ages are 240 years, and I guess age means something. Like, you are the Naughty Bakers. Well, tell me, how does it feel to be nominated? So for me, it feels incredible. Um, I was just telling somebody else that I was 15 years old reading The Advocate and out in my room as a teenager fully out in the 90s and so to now be here be honored by the out magazine is just unreal there's no words uh, my name is eva rain how does it feel to be recognized and being the out 100 it feels really really amazing yeah um yeah a uh, long time coming i guess i'm only in my 20s but yeah <laughs> yeah why do you think the diversity this year is so diverse Absolutely. why do you think that's so important diversity is really vital because we live in a very diverse world so I think everyone on, on screen should really reflect and honor that back, yeah. Well, I think what's really great about this group is that, you know, diverse in a lot of different ways in terms of themselves, their, uh, their queer identity, and also just the fields that they are in. And it's just a real representation that there's no field that queer people can't excel in. Yeah, and why do you think the Out 100 is so important still to our community? Because it's important for visibility, period, especially in the world that we live in today. Um, you'll find that, you know, gender constructs are being teared down. And uh, it's amazing to be um, a voice in the community. Drag has always been political. Um, queer people have always been in the forefront of politics. And I think that we're the ones with the voices and we're the ones who really, you know, run this country. Go, oh, you got a voice. Baby, I got a voice, honey. I'm very loud and scary at 3 a.m. running down that boardwalk chasing people, you know? An absolute honor to be recognized. You know, we, we've been sort of like thriving and being and creating and kind of like the underground and kind of like darker spaces, queer spaces for sure. And it was a pleasure to see that we're being recognized from the people sort of like in the waking world, if you will. Yeah. And back to our gorgeous hosts, Sonia and James. Thank you, Stephen. We'll check in with you a little later on in the night. Gerard Carmichael is redefining comedy as we know it. In 2022, he was on fire. Coming up on the Out 100 special, his biggest accomplishments of the year and his hope for the future. And we are recognizing and acknowledging a few change makers in the LGBTQ plus community that overcame adversity with resilience and joy in their path to success. We honored them as our Out 100 covers. You're watching the Out 100 virtual celebration.
In 2022, Out Magazine celebrated a major milestone, 30 years in publication. Well, this year we featured Anthony Rapp, Bowen Yang, the cast of Hacks, and Neil Patrick Harris. Earlier, we talked with Out Magazine's editor-in-chief, Daniel Reynolds. So, Daniel, what did the Out 100 mean to you growing up? Well, when I was a closeted teen, I remember finding Out Magazine at Barnes & Noble and stumbling across this list of people who were out and proud and successful. And for me, that gave me a possibility model for, I mean, just being an out adult and doing things like being editor-in-chief of Out Magazine. I mean, I had no conception of even a future as a queer youth. So that magazine and that list really gave me hope and possibility. Without a doubt, 2022 will always be a memorable one for Gerard Carmichael because this was the year that he publicly came out during his HBO comedy special, Rothaniel, and then he won an Emmy Award for that show. Well, now Gerard is adjusting to life as a gay celebrity, which includes being an Out 100 cover star. You can't miss Gerard Carmichael among the black tuxedos. Here he is in a white fur coat accepting his Emmy for his HBO special, Rothaniel. Now he's an Out 100 cover star. Being an Out 100 cover star, uh, it's very nice. I feel very um, new uh, and thankful and grateful for like this. This is very, very cool. Cool is the word many use to describe this cutting edge comedian. Since first making a name for himself in his 2015 NBC sitcom, The Carmichael Show, Gerard has been proving his brand of humor is unlike any other. My greatest accomplishment this year What's like a bullshit answer I could say about like self growth or uh, like whatever? I don't know. I made a lot of money. That's probably it. That's actually, that is it. That's the thing that I return to the most. <laughs> it's that kind of brutal and hilarious honesty that has won Gerard Awards and millions of loyal fans, even through life's ups and downs. It's kind of like that, right? Like it's like a roller coaster, or something like big, where you like know it's going to be scary, but it's not going to kill you. I don't know if I can practice resilience, but you try and be resilient, you, you know, try not to be crushed by things. Among the obstacles Gerard has had to overcome is the difficulty his family has had in accepting that he is gay. He describes the relationship with his mother as strained, but adds that he continues to remain hopeful. It's hard to come to terms with, and it's kind of where I started, and I, uh, I think I'm there where I can accept that just because someone can't change doesn't mean they don't love you. And I always had hoped that love comes with change or at least a person's willingness to adapt like, you know, like any relationship you would think it would call someone to grow or want to grow for you. but. Sometimes there's a line and, you know, I came out late and I learned these lessons late and they're, you know, people younger than me, far more mature than me. So I can only kind of speak to my hypothetical younger self um, to just know that, to accept that as a reality and to know that that's not necessarily a, a bad thing. It's just life calls for readjustment sometimes. Still ahead, gay, gender fluid singer songwriter Jake Wesley Rogers had the opportunity to perform at Elton John's Oscar party last year, and now they're making a name for themselves as they're looking to reach a mass audience to spread a message of love and visibility. And 95 year old former baseball pioneer Maybell Blair surprised a panel when she publicly came out as gay. Find out why she said coming out was her proudest and happiest moment. The Out 100 virtual celebration continues in just a moment. The next honoree on our Out 100 list is singer-songwriter Jake Wesley Rogers. At only 25 years old, he's already performed with Brandi Carlile and toured with Panic at the Disco, and Jake is only getting started. Yeah, 
it's it's been a really beautiful and and um high energy year <laughs> kind of a lot of things I, I dreamed of. Dreams are coming true for this young artist who grew up idolizing Lady Gaga and Oscar Wilde. Now he's the one young people are looking up to as he writes and records music that reflects his truth as someone who identifies as gay and gender fluid. My music in general, if you listen to it, is just sort of my inner exploration um, based on my outside observations um, and inside observations. and. Um, that's what I plan to do with my music and my art my whole life is just to have it reflect the times and reflect um, where I am, wherever that may be. Right now, it's in the studio where Jake is recording his first full length album and soon it will be on the road on his first headlining tour. I think what's most rewarding is um, that every night I get to tell my own story um, on my own terms. Um, and I, I really don't take that for granted. I feel like the rain is I don't take that lightly, especially on the road, you know, and meeting so many people and um, a lot of young queer kids, a lot of moms who bring their young queer kids. And it's, it's really special for me because um, I wanted that so badly as a kid. Um, so it's humbling um, to be a light, um, one of the light, one of the many lights that there are now. Um, and I, I'll continue to, to shine that rainbow. <laughs> Up next, the old gays. She's the face and the voice of the Biden administration. Karine Jean-Pierre made history this year when she was appointed White House press secretary in May. She's the first black person to assume this role and the first LGBTQ plus person to do so. Jean-Pierre says one of her proudest achievements is becoming part of the most diverse administration in history. This year on National Coming Out Day, she shared her own experience. Like so many in the LGBTQ community, Coming out wasn't an easy thing to do. My family was traditional and conservative. Being gay in my family wasn't something that you mentioned out loud or celebrated. But my family, like many, many other families, grew to accept who I was. They saw that who I loved didn't change who I was as a person. It didn't change the things I liked to do. And it didn't change the goals I had for my life. The beauty of America is its freedoms and the promise that you can achieve your dreams no matter your race, sex, country of origin, sexual orientation, or gender identity. This is something we continue to strive toward and fight for, particularly as we continue to see a wave of anti-LGBTQ legislation across the country. And it's why I'm so honored to serve the President and the First Lady, who have stood with the LGBTQ community for many years and will continue to stand with all those who come out. You can read more of her story on out.com. Delaware State Senator Sarah McBride is the country's first out transgender state senator. This out 100 honoree has a long list of accomplishments. She's also the first out transgender woman to work at the White House and the first transgender person to address a national party convention. We recently spoke with her about finding inspiration while doing the hard work of igniting change. I am actually more hopeful at the end of this, my first term, than I was when I started after the, the 2020 election, which you mentioned was uh, a, a first for, for trans people at this particular level or in this particular position. And I stand on the shoulders of folks like 
uh, Danica Rome, who, who really blazed trails. But I leave more hopeful than I was when I started because I've seen um, what is possible. I've seen what I believed when I ran, which is that state legislatures have both a responsibility and an opportunity to be the last line of defense for our rights and laboratories of democracy for bold ideas that meet the scope and the scale of the challenges that we face. And that hope, that desire, that belief that I had when I ran has come to fruition. It's been validated every single day in the previous two years. Earlier this year, McBride's Healthy Delaware Families Act became law. It establishes paid family and medical leave in Delaware and is the largest expansion of the social safety net in recent state history. She was major inspiration for the hit film A League of Their Own, and now she has become a major inspiration for the LGBTQ plus community. She's Maybell Blair, and at 95 years old, she's making her place in queer history loud and clear. With her signature wide-rimmed glasses and baseball-shaped cane, former All-American Girls Baseball League player Maybell Blair knows how to make a statement. And that is exactly what happened this year during Pride Month, when at 95 years young, she came out publicly as gay during a press panel for the new Prime video series, A League of Their Own. The show expanding on the stories Penny Marshall told in the 1992 film, with that all-star cast of stars like Rosie O'Donnell, Gina Davis, Madonna, and Tom Hanks. Blair, a former pitcher for the Peoria Red Wings went on to play for the National Women's Softball League in Chicago during the 1950s and was brought in as a consultant for the new A League of Their Own series created by Abby Jacobson and Will Graham. She says coming out this year was her proudest and happiest moment, adding, I wanted to give younger people the chance to know that it's okay to come out of the closet and they don't have to hide. So beautiful getting to see her live her truth. She's such an inspiration. She really is. Well, in a culture and society obsessed with youth, our next Out 100 honorees are breaking all the rules of social media. Oh, yeah. If you love Dorothy, Blanche, Rose, and Sophia, then you probably love the old gays because they're the new squad that we've all been waiting for. You know, we did a TikTok with Paula of Dougal. And at one point, she looked at me and she said, you have no idea how big you are. This fierce foursome is so big, they've taken over TikTok. Calling themselves the old gays, they range in age from 66 to 79. Bill, Jesse, Robert, and Nick are all friends and neighbors from Palm Springs who started making YouTube videos back in 2018. But it wasn't until they joined TikTok during the pandemic that they went viral, thanks to their lip syncing dances, skits, and costumes, which are almost as colorful as they are. Because that was also the start of COVID, too. Yeah. And people, a lot of people turned to social media. We became their family. That family has now grown to over 8 million followers and 1.8 billion views. But at the heart of everything they do is the desire to build bridges with younger generations to show them what living authentically can look like at any age. And we're finding out that they want to know so much yeah. about our past history and how, how we came about because it was so different to coming out today than it ever has been. A lot of the people I think, you know, who go on to come and meet me are under the age of 35, uh, which surprises me because when I was their age, the last thing I wanted to do was to meet somebody in their 60s. With a new book on the way, these elder statesmen also love sharing advice. They travel more, floss more, uh, and, um... <laughs> And have, eat your vegetables. No, I was going to say yeah. have more sex <laughs> and be educated about sex. And as for their viral stardom, but we're still stunned by. It. Yeah, I, mean, I, I am too. I, I, I still haven't wrapped my head around this whole thing. I love their energy and vitality though. And I love the fact that we now have elders in our queer community that we can look up to and we're seeing a whole different spectrum of what it's like to be gay. Absolutely. Well, let's check back in with the Advocate Channel's Stephen Walker. He's on the red carpet downstairs. Hey, Stephen. Oh guys, I'm having a blast here on the red carpet meeting all my idols. These guys are amazing. How did it feel when you found out that you were in the Out 100? I was shocked, honestly, because I booked this movie last year and it came out in February. So, you know, on 
it, it can feel sometimes like your moment happened and it's gone and you're like needing to get the next thing. So for them to look back and still see that this made an impact early in the year was really humbling because I, wa I read out 100 every year to see who's in there find them on Instagram to see who's doing what, you know? So for that to be me finally is like really exciting. And I'm hoping that like the, my representation, I want other black guys who are like struggling with their sexuality, like my character was in the movie, to see that you can come out and then end up at Al 100 on the red carpet next to fly people looking good. You gotta own yourself and, and then people will support that. And the people who don't, fuck them. Where were you and how did you feel when you found out you were nominated? I, oh, be honored. <laughs> oh my gosh, I, I, I couldn't believe it was real. It felt like the day that I found out I was cast as Luisa in Encanto. Uh, it was uh, amazing. I, I still can't believe it, you know? I feel like, oh gosh, have I truly done as much as these incredible nominees? But um, it lets me know that uh, just me being my authentic self also allows others to feel seen. And to be honored for that is, um, is incredible. It made me feel really proud. Uh, in a way that it worked this um, this sleeping giant within me you know for the longest time you're uh, not considered to be a, uh, a part of society uh, you know in, in the area that I grew up with in Australia and in the immigrant community the Korean immigrant community in Australia and Argentina uh, and then to suddenly be part of a, a collective that uh, is empowering and honoring each other and saying, hey, well done, mate. You know, we've got more to go. Uh, but there, it gives us an opportunity to have conversation so that when we need to have conversation across the aisle, we've already rehearsed it in a way, which I think is super important. To be recognized by my own community means more to me than anything else. And also, I love that OUT is honoring so many people of color. Like, it's one thing to be honored as a queer person, but to be honored as a queer person of color amongst all of my peers that are queer people of color that I greatly respect, the biggest honor. What does Out 100 mean to you? Well, I was Out 100 many years ago, so that was then like, I don't know how many moons ago, but um, I think it's a responsibility. It's fears. I mean, you're recognized by your own people, and it's just, it's just, it's just like, you know, such a responsibility in it too, you know what I mean? I think it's just important for, for us to celebrate each other and get our accolades and stuff, but it's also just, for the people that become the 100, just know that you have work to do, you know what I mean? The work's not done yet, you know? Thank you, back to Sonia and James. Sonia's having a lot of fun down there. He is having Thanks, fun. Thanks, Steven. <laughs> well, she's helped create a freer music landscape. Now she's planning on expanding her kingdom. We'll explain how she's doing it when the Out 100 special continues. Out Magazine has been following Dexter Mayfield's meteoric rise. He's a thriving dancer, body positive influencer, model, content creator, and a judge on CBS's Come Dance With Me. And when I think of Mayfield, I think of happiness. This year, he helped Out celebrate our 30th anniversary by recreating a vintage swimsuit issue that's redefining sexiness and possibility for queer men. Hello, hello. And haven't you come a long way? I remember seeing this man shaking his thing in his underwear in LA. Yeah. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. I decided to do it on magazines instead of just at the club, so I think we have come a long way. Yeah, I mean, I love the representation. You're doing so well. Where were you when you found... I've been loving these stories. Where were you when you found out you were going to be in the Out 100? Um, I was at home, and I just see checking my emails, scrolling, scrolling, and I'm like, Out 100, what is this? And then shock and awe gets into my brain and my body and emotion and honestly just such a surreal moment because I just remember going to sneak and flip through Out Magazine as quick as possible back in the day and 
to be on the page of Out 100, it's an absolute honor. What would, have, what, would, what would it have meant to you if you'd have seen someone like you flicking through the magazines years ago? I, my life would look completely different, or it may not have been, I guess, because I didn't see myself. It gave me inspiration and drive to really be like, we need to see this, not just for myself, but for other plus size, black, queer, boys and girls all over the world and non-binary, the theys, the gays, everybody, and just make sure everybody feels welcome at the table. We love the theys, the gays. And what's next for you? Um, just a few things. Savage Fenty is out now. I'm very happy about that. And, you know, we'll see what else is in the works. Our next Out 100 cover star is a true triple threat. She's a pop singer, an actress, and even a director. Her name is Haley Kiyoko, but to her fans, she's known as Lesbian Jesus. I'm an elemental queen. This queen's career is on fire. The first spark started in 2015 with her hit song, Girls Like Girls. Since then, Haley has been preaching the gospel of love, inclusion, and community. I'm very grateful for my fans and my community and my support system and they remind me that we're not alone. Lately, Haley has been anything but alone. She's in a committed relationship with former reality star Becca Tilly, and she's on the road performing songs from her newest album called Panorama. It's my sophomore album. It's an album that I'm so proud of that feels just sonically a more refined version of where I am in my life. And I'm so excited to share it with my fans, get to play it for them live, and continue to share so many memories and journeys with them. In addition to music, Haley also wants to keep acting and expand her work as a director. She's already directed most of her own music videos, but she wants to develop even more projects with queer storylines. It's all in a day's work for this Out 100 cover star. I always searched for a community growing up, and so being a part of the Out 100 and being on the cover is just such an honor because my community has given so much to me. Um, I hope I can continue to do the same. Okioka says while she's wrapping up her current tour, she's planning on headlining a tour where she hopes to perform every song from Panorama. The self-proclaimed lesbian Jesus says she wants to continue to bring awareness of self-love and spread queer joy as far as she can. And of course this year we can't talk about Haley Kiyoko without talking about Velma from Scooby-Doo. Because this is the year that director James Gunn confirmed that Velma's character in Scooby-Doo is in fact gay. And topping all of that news was the perfect Halloween costume by Haley Kiyoko and her girlfriend Becca Tilly because they dressed as Velma and Daphne. Now Kiyoko first played Velma back in 2009 and in a post on Twitter she said Velma was her first big role in a movie. Movie, but she also remembered thinking, quote, I wonder if they know they hired a lesbian as Velma. And here we are, 14 years later. Chucky has terrorized moviegoers for decades, and writer Don Mancini is mostly responsible for that. Coming up, we'll find out how much of an impact the Child's Play franchise has made on the horror comedy genre and queer actors. You are watching the Out 100 special. When most of us hear the name Chucky, we think of that scary red-headed doll. Yeah, I know I do. But we should actually be thinking of Chucky as an LGBTQ plus icon. And it's all thanks to his real life gay creator, Don Mancini. Chucky is a horror movie legend, and so is his creator, Don Mancini. He wrote seven Child's Play films, including the 1988 original. Now he's the writer and director behind the new TV series, Chucky on Sci-Fi and USA. This time around, the series is packed with queer storylines. Starting in season one, I wanted to create a, a sort of sweet teen puppy love romance between two teenage gay boys. Because as a lifelong horror fan, when I 
When I was their age, I would have have loved to have seen that. In the show, Chucky's owner Jake falls in love with his classmate Devin. Don admits the story has a very personal connection. What I was coming up with and what I wrote for the pilot was the most explicitly autobiographical thing I had ever done. I mean, there were you know other there were queer characters throughout the series, but none like the character of Jake Wheeler in the TV series that was, I really drew on some very specific stuff in my life. Don says his love for horror movies can actually be traced back to his childhood as a gay kid persecuted by many of the adults in his life. Like what those movies all have in common is that, that they have young people who are able to supernaturally punish their enemies. <laughs> so I think that that probably appealed to me as a kid who felt powerless and ostracized from the inner circle in all kinds of ways, and partly or largely because I was gay. Don's career proving the only thing scarier than Chucky is ignorance. And so it's just gotten to the point that I, I feel, you know, I feel like it's a responsibility that I have and that I think any queer person in the position of putting content out there I do think, I do feel an increasing responsibility to um, to honor that and to put that out there. And I think, like, why not? Why not use our, you know, slasher villain as, a, as an emblem of queer cool and queer acceptance? We'll be right back with more from Out 100 2022. Let's head back to the red carpet now, check in with Stephen Walker. Yeah, we're having a lot of fun up here, but Stephen, you really seem to have a lot of fun down there. <laughs> oh, it's so much fun here on the red carpet. This year's honorees are so diverse and they're so smart. I'm learning so much. So tell me a little bit about yourself and who you are. My name is Stacey Stevenson. I'm the CEO of Family Equality, and our mission is to advance rights for LGBTQ plus families. Amazing. And, um, how is, how is that so important for the LGBT community? Because more and more are becoming families. So, you know, when we grow up and we are told that we cannot have families, when, did, when, you, when we come out and we're told that that's not possible, the fact of the matter is that it is possible, and so we're fighting for those rights. It's still legal to discriminate against us in some states, so we're fighting to advance legislation that allows us to have families. So I, I've been representing uh, 20 communities across Cape Cod, Martha's Vineyard, and Nantucket for, uh, this is now my, my sixth year. I was just re-elected to a fourth term. Uh, I feel like the young guy, I'm, I'm still the young guy, but um, I've been working uh, to advance policy and legislation related to public health, related to LGBTQ equity, related to mental health. Uh, the Massachusetts legislature passed a landmark mental health reform package this summer. I was the lead author of that. Uh, for LGBTQ folks, right, we know how important mental health is, right, talking about mental health, um, that, you know, the difference, I know in my life, right, access to mental health care has made all the difference in the world. Tell me, what are you going to change next? You've done, you've worked tirelessly, you've done so well. We've um, been able to deliver universal, affordable broadband to everybody in the country at GetInternet.gov. Get internet um, we've been able to help start solving the climate crisis, which is the most important thing that we can do for the future of the planet. Um, we've done so many great things. I am so excited about how this country is going to be able to move um, and, and what people can take away from this. So, What is the most important thing gay men need to know about their health? I think for a sexually active gay man, it's important to know what your sexual health status is. Are you HIV positive? Are you HIV negative? If you're HIV positive, get treated to undetectable status. You can live a completely normal life. If you're negative, go on PrEP to prevent HIV if you have risk factors. Uh, you know, condoms are a great thing to use these days to help prevent things, but a lot of people aren't using them anymore. And so I'd like to offer a lot of harm reduction and risk reduction on other things that you can do to help uh, make sure that you still live a very healthy sexual life. This is, is a tech man. 
Yes, uh, the executive director of Transsex Social Enterprises, founded by Angelica Ross. Which is amazing. And also, tell me about um, Marsha's Web. Is that the next big thing? or is yes. Yes. That, is, that is the next big thing. Marsha's Web is a directory that centers black trans folks um, and organizations that serve trans people and intersex communities. So in my philosophy, if it's safe and secure for black trans people, it's safe and secure for everyone. So, it's, so businesses can uh, advertise their services as well as organizations advertise their resources. You're a busy man. Have you just taught a class? I literally just got off the bike. Literally, I smell you smell great. I did take a shower. Uh, I, I did take a shower. Yeah, I just got off the bike. I just taught my uh, third episode of LOL Cody, my new series of Peloton. And uh, JC Chazé from NSYNC was our guest. And it was so much fun. It's true. I heard you describe it a bit of like being a, a gay Trojan horse. <laughs> You're, yes. you're breaking into like yes. these houses yes. all over the world. That's how I use a Peloton bike. It's like a gay Trojan horse. Like people buy the bike, they take class, maybe like in more rural or conservative parts of the country, and they fall in love with the workout with me, and then they kind of like change their minds about what queer people look like, and hopefully change their minds, and then it has this kind of like domino effect within their small communities. So it's all about like having purpose and impact, even in really small ways. Absolutely. My name is Fiona. My pronouns are she/her and I'm an Emmy-nominated film director and author. My book came out this week called Are Bisexuals Just Greedy? <laughs> Animated answers for all people who simply want to understand the spectrum of being LGBTQ+. And that's great. And it, why is it so important that we're understanding all aspects of the LGBTQ community? Yeah, it's abs yeah, we really need to expose the spectrum, especially when we realize that Gen Z, currently like one in six Gen Z identifies as bi, and one in five identifies as LGBTQ, so the future is very queer, and it's so important to use media to advocate and change hearts and minds, because storytelling has that power. How does it feel to be part of the I-100? Uh, I can't even describe it. When when I got the news, I just bawled for a while, and then I called my mom and let her know. Being part of the R100 is iconic. Uh, some of the most important LGBTQI representative of our community have been part of the R100, and I never, in my wildest dream, thought that I was going to be part of it. So I'm just completely honored. So thank you to all our honorees. Back to Sonia and James. Sonia, truly an amazing list this year. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling very inspired. I am as well, and I'm so happy to see it all come together at this incredible event. Thank you so much for joining us for this Out 100 special. I'm Sonia Baghdadi. And I'm James Vaughn. We'll see you right back here next year for the 2023 Out 100.